first question uh, from the Globe and Mail and uh, David Parkinson and uh, your question to the panel. Well, uh, I, I want to expand a little bit on what Brett started talking about because you might not remember this, but uh, I, I talked to you uh, maybe about a year ago, a little more than a year ago, about uh, about summer read, and we were doing a, a feature on on what books some some of the entrepreneurs were, uh, some of the big name entrepreneurs in this country were reading, and and Brett had a surprise answer. He said he he, he said I read marketing texts. Sometimes I read old marketing texts. I got a whole shelf full of them. I go back and I read them again, and uh, so I, I want to. I guess it's it's easy to say you got to be able to sell. And I'm betting half the room behind me is going, holy crap, I don't know how to sell. You know, <laughs> I've never sold a thing in my life. I know how to make something. I know how to work hard, but I'm not a salesman. So what, I mean, what do you learn, Brett, when you're, when you're reading that stuff? What are you pulling out of that that's like a actual, you know, a useful information on a guy like me who's never sold anything? How am I, how am I gonna, what do I need to know how to do to be, uh, to be successful in marketing? What's, what's the best trick? Well, there's a lot of people come out of the business schools believing they understand marketing, but I'll tell you, if you don't understand what post-purchase dissonance is, you haven't studied enough. I'll just leave it at that, so those online can figure that out. But the real message is that the most important class I took in all of my schooling was called Consumer and Buyer Behavior, by far the most important class, and understanding why. For example, BMW, I bought one of their expensive um, sports cars. A year to the day after I took delivery of that car, they couriered to me a picture book, a book of, about the Z8 when it was made, but on the front cover was a picture of my car rolling off the assembly line one year earlier. Reinforcement that I'd made the right decision with the right company on the right car. Post-purchase post dissonance disappears. I've made the right decision. So again, all of that ties back though to the sales effort, to the marketing effort, to differentiating your product. And uh, I can, I, I love reading the marketing books and, uh, and don't laugh at this one, but I like the pictures. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Yeah, I'm fascinated. I still remember one of my favorite advertisements that we studied, and this is all in the branding and goodwill pro, um, era, but there was a picture of the lunar landing module. This was back in 1978 or whenever they first landed on the moon, and there was a picture of the Volkswagen Beetle, and under at the bottom it said, neither one is pretty, but they sure work well. And just that sort of imagery and the memory, the fact that I can remember it, all right, 25 years later, whatever it was since I last went to school, went to school. But it just tells you that that sort of advertising was memorable. And I really focus on the concept of memorable whenever we're doing client events, um, putting over an advertising piece or an invitation. We treat every piece of what we do like it has to be memorable. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to put a Sarah Palin on you. I don't read. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, she can't read. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. But, uh, no, but to, but to expand it for the, the other two panelists. I educate we... myself. I try to educate myself with the, with the with industry that I'm in and, and knowing what the legislation is all about. My industry is governed by government legislation. Fiscal governs the automobile insurance industry. So it's knowing what that legislation will bring to my service or how it will affect my service that I'm offering to the insurance industry. And gov we all know government changes don't just happen overnight. You know it's coming. So it's, you, you have to take that opportunity to educate yourself and to know what to do and how to prepare yourself for your customers. Yeah. Uh, I would just go back on, on, on a personal experience, and, and I have many roles within the bank, uh, but one of them was an account manager, so I was a frontline person. And a client took me aside, and he was, he was coming to us to apply for, for a partnership with us. And he basically said, I'm going to explain to you why people need this product. And, and so was he a salesperson? You could argue he was a salesperson, but he leveraged what? You know, he started asking me questions about myself. What, what do you do on the weekend? How do you consume? What do you do? And he goes, I can enumerate the number of times that my product and service could probably help you in your day-to-day -day life. So, you know, from a marketing standpoint, I'm going to go back to it. Put it back in everyday human behavior in terms of how are you going to relate to your future client base? And, and how is this going to help them out? And I got to tell you, f from that perspective, you know, you're always a little concerned about w what people are going to ask for. But as soon as you break the barrier and you consciously can relate to what it is they're going to sell, y you've got them. And is that marketing? Is that selling? I, I would say that's probably relating. 
and figure out how you're going to relate to your target audience and how it's meaningful for them. Yeah, exactly. I think we're, I don't want to scare some of the people out here. We're saying, you know, you're going to have to sales. And I know some engineers online going, oh, God, I haven't got past this cubicle. Uh, there's two engineers yeah, sitting right here. It's not, you know, the, <laughs> geeks, the geeks can rule the world. I mean, you might make fun of the engineers, but someday you'll be working it's true. But, you know, the, the <laughs> act is to get that job. You have yeah. to sell yourself. Absolutely. And, and you're dealing with committees at work or something. So it's it's not so daunting. It's I, I know my mentor said, you know, and, he said, be the animal in front of you. How are they thinking? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and he was actually a geek, an accounting geek. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so not to get these people out there uh, uh, worried about you know, being a marketing and sales animal, but uh, we do it anyways with our resumes and so forth.